Denny got everybody crying. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I shouldn't preach. All right, uh, turn in your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1, we'll look at verses 1 through 7. Now there was a certain man of Ramathiam, Sophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerom, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli and Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to her sons, to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provert, provert, provert her, provert her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. There's a lot of tongue twisters in that scripture right there. I can tell you that. Uh, you know, when we stop and we think about our lives, uh, we've all made choices in our lives uh, that have directed our past. Some of them have been really wonderful choices, and when we think about it, it's just, man, it was just a great ideal that we had, and, and we were so blessed by them, but some of our choices in life uh, might be a bad decision that we made, and things didn't quite work out the way that we wanted it to and it had some consequences that we had to deal with and sometimes those consequences we deal with for the rest of our life uh, and sometimes when we're thinking back and, and reflecting on our life we some of us at, at various times in our life we may experience the uh, the thought that the grass is greener on the other side that maybe if I would have made a, a better choice in life, that I would have went in this direction. Or maybe that thought might even be, if I had a better choice of a spouse, maybe life would be better in this direction. Uh, but when you stop and, and, and you're, you're thinking about those kinds of things, when you're thinking maybe, you know, if, if I married somebody else, those kind of thoughts really are detrimental. To your life you can't think those thoughts god has directed you to the person that you're with uh, and you, you gotta hold true to those uh, things sometimes it may be a bad decision and sometimes you got to live with things but you got to do the best that you can in life to work with who you with and, and i think that goes whether you make a bad decision or a good decision uh, you know when, when you're thinking about marriage and i've said this i don't how many times marriage is difficult it's really not for the faint at heart you have to work at it you have to work at your marriage to make it well uh, so sometimes you know you may be thinking that yeah I should have done something differently yeah. don't pay attention to the devil the devil is going to fill your head with those kinds of thoughts and in our scripture today Elkanah didn't really he didn't really wish that he married somebody else. He actually did. Uh, he, he was married to Hannah, uh, but she wasn't giving him any children. And according to uh, rabbinical tradition, uh, it says that Hannah was his first wife. So he married Hannah. He loved her. She wasn't bearing any children. And according to Jewish law, after 10 years of not bearing a child, you were allowed to marry a second wife so that she would be the one that would bear you children. So uh, they were married. She didn't have children. And of course, he married Penina. 
when I think about their story, it's very similar to Abraham and Sarah's story. And we're all familiar with that scripture where uh, Abraham was married to Sarah and they were old, getting older in age and she never gave him any children. And so they got tired of waiting on the Lord to do something. So uh, Sarah said, well, take my handmaiden Hagar and have children through her. Uh, so they did that and that produced Ishmael. And then years later, uh, I think it was 12 years later, uh, Sarah actually did get pregnant and uh, Isaac came along. So we know what that situation looks like. Because they couldn't wait on the Lord to give Sarah a child, they went out and they did something foolish and it produced Ishmael. And in producing Ishmael, now we have all the conflict that we have going on in the Middle East because of uh, the relationship between Isaac and Ishmael. Uh, just two different things that were, that were happening. One was the child of God and one uh, was uh, the child of the world. So when we seek out our own plans and we are not patient for God to line us up with who we're supposed to be with, where we're supposed to be at in life, sometimes it's, it's going to give us uh, a little bit of heartache and, and we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to live with it. So we need to be patient waiting on God. So uh, Elkanah wasn't patient. He, well, he waited for 10 years, but then he ignored and just went on with whatever he was going to do, and he married uh, Penina. And they had children, several children. It says several sons and daughters. So they had a multitude of children in that marriage. Uh, so let's look back at verses 1 through 4, and I'm going to try not to butcher these names again. Now there was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerom, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Benina, his wife, and to her sons and daughters. So let, let me just stop and I want to look at Penina, his, his second wife. Uh, I want to look at her first. How did Elkanah view her? He only saw her as the mother of his children. He didn't really, he, he didn't really love her. He, he took care of her. He made sure that her needs were met. But he didn't really love her. His love was for his first wife, Hannah. So because of his treatment of Penina, how did she turn out? She didn't have that love, and what we see is perceived that he didn't love her. Out of that came the jealousy that she had for Hannah. You see, Penina was jealous of that love that Hannah had. She wanted to be loved like Hannah was loved. But she didn't get that. So that created jealousy. And what does jealousy create? Jealousy creates division, heartache, and all these different things that are going on in their lives. And uh, so from Alcana's position, he didn't see her as a one. He only saw her as a necessity in life. She's just something that I needed. Uh, so... Let me stop and ask you guys. I know this is Mother's Day, but let me ask you guys. How do you treat your wife? How do you treat your wife? Do we love our wives unconditionally? Do we treat them with the greatest respect? I know when I stop and I'm reading through this and I'm reflecting on my, my own life, my own marriage, I, I know I'm not the greatest husband in the world. I, I got things I got to work on. You know, and, and guys, if most of y'all would admit it, you know that you got some things that you got to work on. Uh, 
you're not perfect either. Uh, but there's, there's a good news. We, we got room for improvement. We can improve. We, we can get better. And we can get better by following God's direction for our lives. But if you pour yourself into your marriage, if you pour yourself and you work hard, you're probably going to have a good marriage. But if you give very little in your marriage, if you do the very least possible that you can do in a marriage or, or in, in any relationship, what you're going to get out of it is next to nothing. You're, you're, you're going to get bad results. You're going to have a marriage that's rocky, that's in trouble all the time. You're just going to have bad results. But beyond marriage, because I know some of them uh, or some of them in here are widowed or single or divorced or whatever. Uh, so this doesn't really apply to just marriage. It, it applies to your life in general. If you give of yourself in all that you do, if you go to work and you give of yourself 100%, you do the best job that you can do. <laughs> you treat people the best, the kindest. You love them unconditionally. You're going to get good results. You're going to have a good life. Uh, you're going to be blessed by God. But if you go into a marriage or a job or a friendship or anything else and you put very little, you invest very little into it, you do the least possible in all of these circumstances, what you're going to find is a bunch of heartache. Your marriage is going to be rocky. You're probably going to get fired from several jobs. You're, you're probably not going to be well respected. Uh, you're probably not going to have that good life that you want. So it's all in what you invest in. And if we invest our time in God, then we're going to find that we're going to have a pretty good life. You know, we got to invest in that relationship too. As much as we invest in our children, in our spouse, and our whatever else in our jobs, we have to invest time in, in God in order to have that good life. But if you give very little, you're probably not going to go anywhere. You're probably not going to have that good life. And what I found here is I'm getting older. Uh, a lot more of the people that I know are passing away. And when you get to the end of your life and when you pass away, everybody's not going to listen to what you've said. They're going to look at your actions. Your life is going to speak volumes after you're gone. Your life is going to look at them and, and, and they're going to be able to say, yes, this person was an outstanding mother, an outstanding husband, outstanding worker, outstanding servant of the church. He loved the Lord. She loved the Lord. They're going to look at your life and they're going to see what you invested your time in. So if your time is invested in the things that are insignificant and don't mean much, and that's what your life is going to represent. But if your life is invested in the things that matter, into your family, into your friendships, into your relationship with God, then you're going to have that good life that everybody wants. Let's look at verses 5 through 7. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb, and her rival also provert, provert her why can't I say that word? Provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. So now we want to look at Hannah's life. When I think about what Elkanah, El Elkanah did for Hannah, he loved her. He invested in her life. He poured himself into that relationship. And what he got out of it was he, he got a wife that didn't cause trouble. Got a wife that was faithful. She faithfully stood by him and, and went up to the uh, temple every year to make an offering. And, and she did that while having this other woman accompanying her, harassing her the whole time. Can you imagine her life and how much... Uh, Penina harassed her over the jealousy. But she endured all that because she loved her husband and she didn't cause trouble. She was faithful and she endured that trouble because 
of love, the love that she had for her husband. But it says that she kept that herd inside because she didn't have any children. Now, when you love somebody, you endure all things together. Every marriage, every friendship, every relationship that we have at your job, you're going to have rocky times. Your marriage is going to have rocky times. But you know what? You endure through all of that out of love. And, and you, you do the very best that you can to be faithful in all circumstances. And more importantly, you do your best to be faithful to the Lord. We need to faithfully cling to Him and we need to uh, faithfully serve Him even when it seems like sometimes all of our prayers are going unanswered. We're asking God for things. God, please do this. Please do this. And we may perceive it as an unanswered prayer. But to God, it's a not yet. Or it's a I got something better for you. And I, I'm not going to cover the whole story on hand of the day. This is just an introduction into the, the book of Samuel. So hopefully what we can take out of this is that uh, the love that uh, they had for each other in the marriage. You can see the positive thing that came out of love. And you can see the negative thing that come out of jealousy. So let me ask you, how does your relationship with your spouse or your friends or your co-workers look? How do you treat people in this world? Do you invest into other people or do you only invest into yourself? You see, when we only invest in ourselves and, and we're only uh, about us, then our life is, is going to be filled with strife and contentions and all these other things. And I don't know about you, I, I had that life. That life was miserable. A life that just had hurt and pain in it. I'm so joyous over the life that God has given me. A life that's filled with peace, with love. I'm, I'm, I'm able to love others and to serve people. You see, this is more than just a tale about two wives. It's really about how we treat each other in this world. How do we treat people? What kind of person do you want to be in this world? And when you leave this world, what do you want them to say about you? What's the number one thing that you want people to talk about at your funeral? I hope and I pray that above all else, being a good husband, a good wife, a good father, a good son, whatever it may be, that the number one thing they can say about you at your funeral is, man, they sure did love Jesus. Because that's the only thing that really matters in the end. Because you can't really love your spouse. You can't really love your children or your parents if you don't first love Jesus. We need to allow Jesus to mold and shape our heart and our minds in all that we do in life. We need to give him full control so that we can be, uh, the, the Bible can be poured out through our lives so that we can let others know that Jesus is and always will be the number one thing in our lives. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you how you can, in the, in the simple story of the life of, of these three individuals, how we can see what goodness uh, comes when we do things right and what heartache comes when we do things wrong. Uh, Father, help us to always be pursuing you and then we can have the good things in life. We can have that joy and peace that passes all, sir, uh, all understanding that we can have love that overflows to everyone that we know. Father, as I said, I, I know I'm not a perfect husband. I'm trying to be. But I know I've got room for improvement. Uh, and, and I know there's some women here that are
trying to be the best wife and guys that are trying to be the best husband. We're trying it, but we need your guidance, Lord. Uh, you need to speak to our heart, show us how we need to be. And God, if we're falling short, if we're falling way short, there's room for improvement if we just trust in you. So Father, help us, guide us, lead us to where we need to be. Father, help us again on this Mother's Day. Um, help us to love our moms if they're still here, God. Help us to, to love them. Show them how special they are. You gave them to us, God. It was a gift. And what a wonderful gift. So God, help us to have that love overflowing today. God, not that it just be on one day, but God, that it would always be year after year for all eternity that love pours out of our hearts unconditionally. So God, help us. We give this time to you. Speak to our hearts in Jesus' name.